Hi, everyone. Welcome to KQ. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip. And we're coming to you from our house in San Francisco, California, like we do every Tuesday at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And today, what's on the menu? Grilled pizza sandwiches. We're making pizza grilled cheese That's sandwiches. <laughs> so we're making grilled cheese sandwiches in the June Intelligent Oven, and they're going to be filled with traditional and some non-traditional pizza ingredients. So we're kind of doing a mashup today of two things we really love, grilled cheese sandwiches and pizza. Mm -hmm. And we're putting them together into an easy to make and prepare and a super yummy lunchtime treat. So today in San Francisco, it is 59 degrees and mostly clear and sunny. However, it is extremely, Very extremely windy. Mile an hour wind. Yes, 28 to 35 mile per hour winds. It is super windy here. We just installed a new greenhouse uh, over the weekend, and we were so worried overnight that the whole thing was just going <laughs> to blow away. away. We've seen that happen to other people. Actually. Yeah, our neighbors had their whole greenhouse fly away one year. So hopefully, uh, so far, it's still where we installed it. We'll see by the end of this windstorm if that's still the case. So let me say hi to the people in the chat. Frack Daddy's here. Hey, Jared. Great to see you. Thanks for coming to hang out with us today. And Madwood Barbecue's here. Woot woot for Madwood Barbecue. And our lovely friend Sunset is here. So great to see you here, Sunset. We hope everything's good with you at where you are. Sunset's all the way on the East Coast, so it may still be snowing there. I, I didn't check the weather on the East Coast today. So uh, great to see all of you. What we're going to do today is we're going to be mashing up grilled cheese sandwiches with some pizza ingredients. And for the first sandwich, what we're going to do is Philip made us this lovely really rich and luxurious marinara sauce. So we're gonna use that as our sauce element. And we're going to use mozzarella. mozzarella cheese as our cheese element. And for our protein element, we have- Pepperoni. So we have this lovely pepperoni. And we just took uh, small pepperoni discs and we cut them into little tiny pie-shaped wedges so we can layer on lots and lots of pepperoni. And we're also going to add for a topping, Pickled onions. These are pickled red onions. We make these here at home all the time. Actually, Philip does the work on that. If you want the recipe for the pickled red onions, you can go to the little search bar on our video page and type pickled red onions, and the recipe and video for this will come up. And we also have a marinara sauce recipe uh, and a YouTube video, so you can learn how to make this as well. And for the second sandwich, we're going to use some different ingredients, and I'll tell you about those as this broadcast unfolds. So... Uh, also, while the sandwiches are baking in the June oven, we're going to mix a cocktail, and yay, today on the cocktail menu is a limoncello lemon drop. So if you like lemon and vodka, this is going to be the cocktail for you. It's super refreshing, very lemony, and very boozy, so we think it's perfect for day drinking. Yay, yay, yay. Hey, Cooking with Corey's here. Hi, Corey. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. So what is the first thing that we need to do to get started on putting these sandwiches together? Got to butter some bread. Okay. So what kind of bread are we going to use for We're this first? We're going to start with wheat sandwich bread. We're just using a light wheat sandwich bread. It's just, you know pre-sliced right from the grocery store. There's Nothing fancy. There, yeah. yeah. This is the kind of bread that we use for breakfast toast and for lunchtime sandwiches all the time. So we're gonna start with two slices of wheat bread. Let me get this out of the way. They don't match. Let's get two that match. It's always nice when the breads match. Okay, so let's put that piece back. Okay. We'll have it later. Okay. There we go. Okay, so Philip's gonna start out the preparation for the pizza grilled cheese sandwich by buttering both sides, or excuse me, by buttering one side of both pieces of bread. So let's put this back over here. I'm going to keep this over here so I can reach those. And let's say hi to everyone who's joined us in the chat room. Oh, Cooking Cop and Baber here. Hello. Yay! Great to see you. We hope you're. Uh, we hope everything's going well with you. And Josh, we really appreciate the updates on your Instagram about your treatment. And we hope everything's going well with that. It's great to see you here today. 
And let's see. Yeah. Okay. I've said hi to everyone. And Babe, I hope Babe's out there listening too. We just love her. She's so adorable. And we hope everything's going well with both of you down there in Southern California. And oh, John Overstreet is here. Hi, John. Great to see you. John is one of our good friends from uh, many events at the June headquarters here in San Francisco. The company that makes these ovens headquarters is located right here in San Francisco, and they often have had corporate events in the past. And that's where we know John from. And so it's great to see you here, John. Thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so Philip's busy buttering one side of two slices okay. of wheat bread. And that's the beginning of the preparations for our pizza grilled cheese sandwiches. So let's get that out of the way. And then we're going to need the rest of your ingredients, okay. as well as a baking pan. pan. We start out. Okay. So you want to put the pan here. Let me move this over here. How's that? First thing I do, take the butter bread, put it butter side down on the pan. Butter side down on the pan. And we don't need to grease this or put no. parchment paper or anything it's like that. That's the best that. what the butter's for. Okay. That's what use, the butter's for. You can use mayonnaise. You can use bacon grease if you like. Anything that just give it some uh, moisture. moisture and uh, uh, flavor. Yeah, and it helps the and oil, oil help crisp it up. That's yeah, what that's what we're trying to say. Yeah. Okay, so what goes on okay. the bread now that you've now done Now we're going to put a little sauce, sauce on it. Put the saucy on it. Okay. And not too much. Oh, John says he's a regular, and we really appreciate that, but he can't do the daytime drinking. Well, we're going to do some evening live streams, and so hopefully you can join the cocktail crowd <laughs> for that. We don't usually drink in the middle of the day except when we do live streams. So that's why we love Tuesday because it's an excuse for having a cocktail with lunch. Hello. And Margaret's making bake is here. Hey, Margaret, great to see you all the way from across the pond in Europe. It's great to see you today. Thank you for joining us. And Michelle is here from Michelle's Cozy Home. Um, we love Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Great to see you. We hope you're working on something fabulous in your art studio today. So thank you so much for joining us. Oh, uh, Josh and Babe are saying that it's really super windy in SoCal. Oh, we yeah. mentioned that at the top of this live stream as well. It is so windy here. We thought our new greenhouse was going to blow away because the it's it, the wind is between like 30 and 35 regularly. And then we're seeing gusts of up to 50. So things are definitely blowing all around the neighborhood around here. That's for sure. Okay. So now we have the marinara and let's show... Okay. You just put a, a nice, thin, even layer of marinara sauce on the top of the bread. Just like you do on a pizza. Okay. And so now we're going to do the mozzarella. mozzarella cheese. And we're just using mozzarella that we grated. So you could use sliced mozzarella. We just happened to decide that we wanted to grate it today. We're going to do sliced cheese on the next sandwich that we make once this one's finished. So we're just going with more traditional pizza ingredients, marinara, mozzarella, pepperoni, and then we're going to add some pickled red onion. Oh, Reagan Brown is here. Hi, Reagan. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us today. And C-Mac is here from C-Mac Cook's channel. Hey, Craig, it's great to see you too. And Reagan's asking about, oh, well, the message got retracted. So Reagan was asking about zinnia seeds in pots. How many seeds you need to put in your pot depends on how big your pot is. So let's say if you were using a big 20-inch pot, then I'd use half a package of seeds. More seeds, the better. We're going to layer on okay. the pepperoni. So now we're layering on the pepperoni. And we took the pepperoni that was discs that were about the size of a 50-cent piece, and we cut them in half, and then we cut the half into thirds. So we got six little pie-shaped pieces out of each slice of pepperoni. It makes and it easier to eat. It makes it easier to eat and it makes it a, a, it's a little more time consuming to lay it all on, but you can get a nice super even layer of pieces nicely bunched close together. So you can really stuff the sandwich full of pepperoni. So Reagan, I want you to be sure and let us know how your flower project goes. I always want to see how things work out. Um, we are uh, going to have a new video on Friday, which may be of interest to you. We're going to show you our brand new portable lean-to greenhouse that we installed on our balcony where we're going to be growing herbs in containers. And we're going to have a video coming up show, showing how to plant herb seeds in containers and how to grow herbs in pots on your patio, just like what we're going to do. So thank you for being here today. Okay. 
Yeah. Let's see. Oh, Uncle Steve Shake is here. Hey, Steve, great to see you. Just so you know, Steve. Uh, spicy R on set today. <laughs> We're going to use some of this in a sandwich a little bit later. So, oh, this stuff is so good. If you have not tried Uncle Steve Shake products, please consider going to UncleSteveShake.com once you're done watching this live stream. And check out all the lovely flavors that they have available. We've tried all of them, except for there's a new one. I'm not sure if we're supposed to tell what it's called yet or not, but there's a new one and we had, that we haven't tried. I can't wait to get, but these are so yummy. We use these seasonings all the time now. They have become staples in the KQ kitchen for sure. So great to see you, Uncle Steve. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. And Terry's here. Hey, Terry, great to see you. Thank you for joining us. Now I keep talking and you, I've moved on to the next step. So you layered on Pepperoni. Some pepperoni, and now you're putting on some pickled red onions. Pickled red onions, just a few here and there. So we're just just a few here and there, like he said. <laughs> okay, I like to like see. place them. <laughs> okay, I think we're about there. There we go. Well, uh, Michelle's coming about uh, our herb garden. Uh, Michelle has an amazing property, and her garden last year was gorgeous. The pictures on Instagram, particularly her field full of sunflowers. That was so beautiful, Michelle. It was really amazing to see how much you guys can grow on your nice, lovely, big property. And it's beautiful there. Okay, so now you're going to put a little just more a cheese. A little more cheese, just have to everything stick together. Okay, and the one thing that I've neglected to do that we're, we need to do is turn the oven on. So what we're going to do today, we're using the June Intelligent Oven. And to cook this sandwich so we don't have to flip it halfway through, we're going to use what's called the roast feature on the June oven. And what that does is it engages the heating element at the bottom of the oven and the heating element at the top of the oven. So you get toasting from both sides. So I should have had this turned on right when that was ready to go in. So let me get this set to roast. We're gonna push roast. There we go. And we're at 375 degrees today. So we're gonna push start. And it doesn't take very long for the June to come up to temperature. So this won't be very long before we're ready to pop this baby in. So in the meantime, I'm going to push a few things around just so once this goes in, we have room to make cocktails. Yay. Yay. Uh, let's see. And go ahead. No. Um, we're going to be making uh, the cocktail we're going to make today is called Limoncello Lemon Drop. And it's very lemony from Limoncello. And we have fresh lemon juice today. We were given a huge bucket full of fresh lemons from our lovely neighbor across the street. And so, you know, when life hands you lemons, you make Lim Limoncello cocktails. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. So we've got all these lovely lemons that we're probably going to zest some of them and juice the rest of them. So that's what was the inspiration for the lemon flavored cocktails today. So let me put these little babies back over here and we're just waiting for the oven to come up to temperature and then we'll pop this sandwich in that Phillips already got prepared for us. So Sunset is giving hearts for Uncle Steve's shakes. We sent Sunset a few little goodies and uh, it included some Uncle Steve shakes so they could try them out. So let's see. Um, Yay, I know, I know, cocktails, yay, <laughs> cheers, 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 let's make some cocktails. Hey, Braden's here. Hi, Braden, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us in the chat and want, and for our show this afternoon, we really appreciate it. So we're just doing our best to hang on tight because it is really windy in San Francisco today. And I know Josh said that down in Southern California, where he is, it's also supremely windy down there. Yeah, it was really noisy last night. Oh, well, see, I knew. I told you someone was going to ask about why we aren't using the grilled cheese setting on the June. And that was John asked that. <laughs> so, honestly, John, uh, we find just doing it with the roast feature and uh, you, just setting the timer works really well for us. Plus, we didn't find it. Earlier, we were looking for the <laughs> for the grilled cheese setting in the pre-program programs, and I couldn't find it. So I knew that there was one. I just wasn't able to find it. So we're just going to do this regularly. But if you have a June oven at home, and you know how to find the grilled cheese program, it'll work really well, but it basically, it figures out everything for you. We already know what we wanna do, so that's really not necessary. We're gonna put this in on the roast feature at 375 degrees, and it's gonna take somewhere around six minutes. Yeah. That's what we found, that we, whether it's wheat bread or we also have some artisan white bread, 
both these two kinds of bread take about six minutes to do a grilled cheese sandwich. When we used sourdough, it took almost twice that yeah. long. Mm -hmm. The sourdough bread took a it lot took longer to, toast, to get yeah. brown and toasty. So let me see if I missed anything in the in the chat room. Okay, we're gonna get to the lemon drop cocktails very shortly. Mm -hmm. And we're we're getting close to temperature. We're up to 309. We need to get to 375. And we're delayed because I forgot to turn the oven on when we first started because I was so excited to start talking with everyone. So yeah, we uh, knew so I knew someone was going to ask about why we're not using the grilled cheese preset. And that, like Philip said, we just couldn't find it. <laughs> so even though we've been using this oven for four years, they're still, they're always uh, introducing new things. And sometimes the layout of the interface changes and we just couldn't find the setting today. So I looked through everything. So John, if you know where the setting is, tell us and we'll try that on the next sandwich and see if it comes out any differently than when we just program what we wanna do ourselves. So, okay, so for the cocktail, we're gonna do a limoncello lemon drop. And the difference between a limoncello lemon drop and a regular lemon drop is that we're adding limoncello. A regular lemon drop is vodka, triple sec, lemon juice, and simple syrup. Now, I think with already having triple sec in there and adding simple syrup makes for a really sweet cocktail. And we love sweet cocktails, but for me, I thought it was too sweet and not lemony enough. So we did a different version where we replaced the simple syrup with limoncello. So you get more lemon, uh, lemon flavor, more booze, <laughs> and this lovely, lovely, beautiful light yellow color. So we'll show you that as soon as we get this sandwich in the oven. We've got just another few seconds before the oven gets up to 375. Limoncello pasta is de bomb. That's what Corey says. Limoncello pasta? I have to say I've never heard of limoncello pasta, but that's something we're going to have to definitely research after we're done here. Okay, so you just heard the little noise that the oven makes when it comes up to temperature. So this pizza grilled cheese sandwich is ready to go in the oven. So we're gonna pop this in now. There we go, and I'm gonna set the timer for six minutes. So we'll just push this, push the set timer button. Tile back to six minutes and hit start. Okay, there we go. The sandwich toasting is underway, okay. hooray. Okay, so now it's time to move on to make a drink. So let me get our handy dandy little drip tray out here. And we're going to need all that booze back yeah. there. Oh, also we wanna, I wanna show how to do, grab this. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is prepare the serving glasses. And we're serving these limoncello lemon drops martini style, so they won't be over ice. You could serve these in a rocks glass over ice cubes if you prefer your cocktails that way. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm going to pour out in a circle on this plate some of this yellow sanding sugar. And it's sort of a goldeny yellow. I like to try to make the circle of sugar about the same size as the glass itself. So when you turn it over, it'll land right in the middle of the sugar. So there's our sugar. Now I've got some lemon wedges here and there's lots of ways to get the edge or the rim of the glass wet. Today we're using lemon wedges because we want to enhance that lemon flavor. So I'm just going to run the wedge all the way around the rim of the glass and then dip it right into the sugar. Ooh. Ooh, that came out really good. Okay, so let me show you. We got yellow sugar going on. So let me set that one aside and let's get this next one going. Now this sandwich is probably gonna get done before I'm finished making these cocktails, but that's okay. Okay, so a little more lemon on the rim of this glass. And then we're just gonna dip this in the sugar. And I, I like to make sure there's as much sugar as possible. So there we go. We have a pretty Love decorated it. martini glass for our lemon drop cocktails. Okay, so let's put these things away, that away. Okay, now it's time to actually make our drinks. So if you're familiar with our show, 
you know that we often use these cobbler style cocktail shakers. It's a three part cocktail shaker and the strainer is built in. So you don't need any other bar tools except your measuring device, which today we're using a jigger. And I'm going to put uh, enough ice cubes in the vessel here to fill it up about halfway. That looks pretty good. Okay, so the uh, ingredients for this drink are vodka, triple sec, limoncello, and lemon juice. Today we have fresh squeezed lemon juice, which came from some of the lemons that our neighbor gave us, which was lovely. So I'm gonna use the one ounce cup on the jigger and we're gonna need four ounces of vodka to make this drink. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. Okay. All right. Can I hand that off to mm -hmm. you? Thank you, sir. Okay, now the next thing that we wanna do is add our limoncello. We're gonna do two ounces of limoncello. And limoncello is a lemon liqueur from Italy, just in case you weren't sure about that. you can that. get it at Safeway. Yeah, it, <laughs> you don't have to go to Italy to get limoncello. Thank you, sir. And then we're going to add one ounce of triple sec, and triple sec is a clear orange flavored liqueur. So we're just gonna do one ounce of that. There we go, All thank right. you, sir. And then we're gonna do one ounce of the fresh squeezed lemon juice. Now, if you don't have fresh squeezed lemon juice, you can use lemon juice out of a bottle. That'll be just fine. But fresh squeezed actually really does add a lot more lemon flavor. May I hand you mm -hmm. that? Thank you, sir. Okay, so now we've got all of our ingredients here in the shaker, and it's time to give this a shake. So I wanna make sure I get the strainer and the cap on the shaker very securely, and then we're gonna shake this really vigorously until the exterior of the shaker gets nice and cold. I always like to smile when I'm shaking because cocktails are supposed to be fun. It always puts a smile on my face. It always puts a smile on my face, too. Okay, that looks good. Oh, Margaret's talking about making your own colored sugar. We've actually oh. done that before, and we've also made our own colored salt, so we'll have to talk about that. My mom used to do that. And I see Tessa's here. Tessa, great to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And Jerry Ellen's here. Hi, Jerry Ellen. Great to see you. You're just in time for us to pour the cocktails. Okay, so we're making limoncello lemon drops today. And just so you know, the ingredients for the pizza, grilled cheese sandwiches, and the cocktails are all right down in the description below where you're watching this live stream. Let's pour this baby. Ooh, nice light yellow color. That looks lovely. I wanna, pardon me for reaching. I've got a little bit extra and I'm just gonna pour it off in a separate glass. And we can top our drinks off with that a little bit later. Okay, so one more element to finish off the presentation. We have some lemon wheels from our fresh lemon stash. And I just put a slice halfway up the lemon wheel so you can situate it right on the edge of the serving glass. So there we wow. go. Okay, so. Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary guests, we present to you Cheers. the Limoncello Lemon Drop Cocktail. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, and just, just in time, because it's time for the sandwich to come out. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that nice is so delicious. It is supremely lemony. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way. Where do you want to put that? Um, we need hot pots. Or hot pads, pardon me. Okay, time to get this baby out. We're gonna leave the oven on because we're gonna make at least one more sandwich before we're done here today. So let's take this baby out. Ooh, nice and toasty roasty. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is our pizza grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, so let's set this down. This is a bit of a hot pan. And we've got a serving plate over here. Now, do you want to put that, do you want to, do we need to let it cool before we cut it in half a little, for a little bit? Uh, well, I mean. Just for a minute or two? Okay, minute. we're going to let this cool down just for a minute or two. 
while we have another yeah. sip of our cocktail. Hello. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, honey. Cheers, everyone. Mm. Well, I have to say, Philip was a really good sport this mm. morning. He walked to the grocery store in this terrible windstorm we're having to make sure we had all the things that we needed for this live stream today. So thank you so much for going grocery shopping earlier. It was fun. I did not want to go out in the wind. I didn't lose my hat. So, let me see. Hey, Sundays with Heart is here. Great to see you. So nice to have you here. Leanne's here in the chat room. We really appreciate that. And we, it's so great to see Tessa here. And Mr. Blueberry has joined us in the chat. Great to see you too, Mr. Blueberry. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us today. We really appreciate it. So we're just going to let this cool down just for a tiny bit. And then Philip's going to cut it so we can show you what the inside looks like. And then we're going to give it a taste. But first. But first, oh, you're going to try something new and different. I thought something might be fun. Okay, yeah. What well, Originally, what we did, because you may have seen the thumbnail for this, we cut the sandwiches diagonally, and that's what's called points. Philip had this brilliant idea when we were discussing this live stream the other night that uh, we were going to, to make this sandwich more pizza-like. He wants to use a circle cutter. You're going to need to go way small. Yeah. Uh, a circle cutter to make the sandwich actually round like what a traditional pizza is. Mm. Mm, smaller. There you go. Okay. So what we're going to wind up with is, is this cool round sandwich. And this is just one way of doing this. You could just cut this directly in half. You could cut it diagonally with the chef knife. We're just trying this because we thought making something round would make it seem more pizza-like. And then we're going to have these lovely bits from the edges that we can eat for little snacks. Burnt in. Sounds good to me. So let's go for it. Okay. I'm going to move this over here. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> And then we're going to need to get rid of this hot pan eventually. There we go. We're cutting into the sandwich with a circle cutter. That looks cool. How'd that work out? It worked out well. Okay. Um, there we go. Ooh, I see. Yes, the mozzarella cheese is nice and melty, melty, and it does that nice stretch thing. Okay. okay. So we're ready to pop this onto here? Yeah. Point. Okay. okay. There we go. A round... Pizza grilled cheese mashup sandwich. Da, 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 da. That looks pretty good to me. <laughs> it's cute. I like it. I like it too. <laughs> okay. Can I ask you to mm -hmm. put this on no. and take this and no. get rid of it so mm -hmm. we have this hot thing out of our way? Madwood Barbecue, we really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you so much and good luck at your appointment. We hope everything goes well. So let's put th these aside. Careful, boo. Yoinks. Yoinks. Okay. So let's see, I've got so many things here in front of the camera right now. We're gonna have to move a few little things around so I can show you this beautiful sandwich. Okay. There we go. Okay, so this is what we have. This is our pizza grilled cheese sandwich that Philip just used a circle cutter to cut out. So that looks good. And then we have all these little leftover bits which I, we're going to love this because this is nice and crispy crust yeah. that still has all the pizza ingredients in. So let's try a little bit of this edge. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Mm. Wow. This tastes like a pizza, like pizza. in a sandwich. <laughs> really good. Mm. Oh, my gosh. The mozzarella is really nice. The pepperoni tastes supremely good. I really like that. Nice flavor that we get from your lovely marinara sauce. This tastes like a pizza in a sandwich. This oh. is super good. If you like pizza and you like sandwiches, you will love this. These are so, so yummy. Okay. Margaret's asking about our knobs on our cabinets back here. Oh, yeah. They are Swarovski crystals, and they're called Aurora Borealis crystals. And, yes, they do, like Margaret pointed out, they have a rainbow sort of light refraction to them and they don't all look exactly alike and that's one of our favorite things about it and as you move around the room they give off a nice sparkle and they weren't expensive we actually got them on amazon and they were only about a dollar a piece and Swarovski crystals for a dollar each like that's why i bought a hundred <laughs> i wanted to make sure we had enough for all the cabinets and then plenty left over for any projects in the future yeah we you, yeah we, our cat we have so many cabinets we needed like 75 knobs to do the whole kitchen Mr. Homeowner has joined us. Hey, great to see you, Rob. Thanks for coming to hang out with us this afternoon. We're just taking bites out of our cute little P 
pizza grilled cheese sandwich that Philip put together for us. And he used a circle cutter to cut out the bread once the sandwich was finished to get this effect. And we're just eating the scraps from the edges, which tastes supremely good because they're nice and crispy and the crust is all like buttery and yummy. And the ingredients, this really tastes like pizza put inside a sandwich bread. It's super yummy. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Want this last piece here? No, go ahead. Mmm, okay. that was so good. Mm. Oh my gosh, this food is really good. Okay, so let's see. It's fun. It is fun. We love mashing, mashing things up. Mm. So this was the version of the sandwich with more traditional pizza ingredients. We had mozzarella cheese, marinara sauce, pepperoni and pickled red onions inside of wheat bread. Super easy to do and really super yummy. Now, if we were serving this, would you just serve it round like that or would you like cut no, what it? No, I do is like, I cut it like in at least quarters and then you have, you know, little, little minis. slices of pizza. Yeah, it's like little pizza sandwich slices. That would be a yeah. great appetizer mm -hmm. for a party or a soiree once we're done with COVID and we can actually have company again. Someday. Someday, it won't Same. take forever, Same. but. Hey, Beer Bros and Bon Appetit is Ooh. here. Great to see you. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with our live stream this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Oh, Michelle collects the Swarovski snowflake ornaments. Those Ooh. are gorgeous. Ah. Yes, very sparkly. We love anything that sparkles, glitters, shimmers, lots of bright colors, you know, anything like that. So thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate having you guys here. So what we're going to do next is try another sandwich. So for the next sandwich, we've got a few different ingredients. Let's see, where am I going to put this baby? Uh, I'll, I'll just put it back okay. up here. Okay. So for the next okay. sandwich, we're going to use some artisan white bread. And the difference between this and the wheat bread is just that it's white bread. It says artisan right artisan. on the label. <laughs> So it's just this, fancy white bread. It's fancy white bread. It's a little thicker cut than what most sliced sandwich bread is. And we'll show you that once we get a couple of pieces out of the package here. So there you can see that this is pretty thick. This is the kind of bread that you might see used for Texas toast. Yeah. So yeah, toast. this would make really good Texas toast. It's mm -hmm. perfect for that. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to put that back, and then the next thing that Philip's going to do is we're going to butter, butter one bread. side of both slices of bread, just like we did on the previous sandwich. Here, let me get that for you. There we go. Okay, and then we have different ingredients for this sandwich than we did for the other one. Oh, I'm, am I crowding you? Yeah. Got enough room here? Yeah. Okay, so... Okay, so we're also, in addition to making pizza grilled cheese sandwiches, we're drinking limoncello lemon drops. These are so good. Delicious. Mm. Mm. These are super lemony. It's really refreshing. And it's kind of, it's very boozy, but it doesn't taste super boozy. No. So you have, to, you. you have to be careful with these, especially <laughs> if you're like us and you're drinking them in the oh. middle of the day. So, but these are really lovely. Now, just so you know. As long as we're eating while we're drinking. In the description below where you're watching this live stream, there is information that has all the ingredients for both sandwiches that we're making today, as well as the ingredients for the limoncello lemon drop cocktail. So you can easily copy and paste those into your digital recipe book if you want to try these at home. And if you make the cocktail or you make one of these sandwiches, please take a picture of it and put it on your Instagram and tag us, Kitchen Queers, in your post so we can be sure and check out what you made using our recipe ideas. We'd love to see that. So. Butter side down. Butter side down for the first slice of bread. And then what do we add next? Next we'll put on some sauce. Okay. And today we have Bang Bang Sauce. And mm. everyone always loves that name, Bang Bang Sauce. Mm. Uh, Spicy, bang sweet. Bang Sauce is really super easy to make. And if you search on our, uh, if you go to our main YouTube page and in the search window, you type bang bang sauce, the video with the recipe for how to make this pops up. It only has four ingredients and all you have to do is whisk them together and let it chill for a couple hours and voila, you've got bang bang sauce. It's really easy. It makes great pizza sauce. It makes great pizza sauce. We dip things in it. We're using it for these grilled cheese sandwiches. So these ingredients in this pizza grilled cheese are what we call alternative pizza ingredients 
where the first one we did, it was more traditional pizza ingredients. Like the California Pizza Kitchen. Yes, like California Pizza Kitchen. Okay. So you've just layered on a little bit of bang, bang the sauce. bang bang sauce. So let me show everyone how you did that. So it's just a thin, even layer of sauce. You don't want to overdo it because you don't want the bread to get soggy. Okay, so what comes next once we have the sauce? Gouda. Okay, so we're today using we're using Gouda cheese that Philip sliced fresh earlier. I love Gouda. <laughs> oh, Rob, thank you, Rob, Mr. Homeowner. He's welcoming the June oven back to the dining room countertop. Yay, <laughs> here's for the June oven. <laughs> we're trying to mix things up a little bit, and since we do a live stream every week, we'd like to do, you know, do a June oven presentation. And, of course... I neglected to mention that you can uh, grill the grilled cheese sandwiches any way that you'd like to. You can do it in a pan on the stove. You can bake it in the oven. You can put it on your Blackstone flat top. You can even put it in your smoker if you have one. That would be an excellent oh way to God. do it. Oh, my God. Smoked grilled cheese. Smoked grilled cheese. That would be so good. I think so. I can get one. Okay, so there we go. We've got some sliced Gouda, and you just place one nice even layer yeah. of the Gouda cheese on top of the Bang Bang sauce. Okay, so what happens next? Bacon lardon. Okay, and this bacon lardon is, it's sliced bacon that Philip took and cut in about what? Quarter inch. Quarter inch wide little pieces. Maybe a centimeter. And then cooked it on the stove in a saucepan, so it cooked in its own grease. And then you drained it, and it comes out super crispy and not dissimilar from how we use the little bits of pepperoni the, rather than big slices of pepperoni. Using these smaller bits of bacon, we think, is not only makes it easier to put the sandwich together and it's less unruly than just whole strips of bacon, but it's also easier to eat. And it doesn't, sometimes when you put whole slices of bacon in a sandwich and you take a bite into it, the whole slice of bacon yeah, comes I out with your first bite. So with these little pieces, that eliminates that problem. So we're just going to layer on some of the bacon. bacon. Well, you can never have too much bacon. Mm, bacon. Oh, Tom's Food Factory is here. Hi, Tom. Great to see you. And Tom's commenting that he had grilled cheese for lunch today with mozzarella, jalapeno, and tomatoes. Ooh. Yeah, that sounds good. We got the mozzarella cheese right here, Tom. We actually used the mozzarella in the first sandwich that we made, which is right here for those of you that missed it and this sandwich was made using wheat bread there's mozzarella cheese uh marinara sauce you know more traditional pizza ingredients and then philip used a circle cutter to just create a circle because we thought that would be fun okay so now <coughs> you've got the bang bang the gouda, gouda. cheese and the bacon, bacon. lardon so now we've got some pickled peppers. pickled peppers and these are uh bell peppers or yes okay so Red, these are yellow and orange bell peppers Slice thin. And they're pickled. pickled. They're pickled using the same recipe that we use to make pickled red onions. And you can find the recipe for the pickled red onions right here on our YouTube channel. It's just uh, water, vinegar, salt, and sugar. Well, we agree. Tom said he uses wheat bread too. We use wheat bread most often. We're going to try this next sandwich we using this it. artisan white bread. <laughs> So just so you can see, you know, if you're not a fan of wheat bread, you'll get to see how a sandwich comes out if you use white bread. Old instead. folks need fiber. <laughs> fiber. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Okay. okay so of pickled peppers. Now we've got that going on. How many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? I don't know. I, I don't even want to guess. Oh, okay. And then you're going to layer a little just, bit more just on the not, top. Not solid, just some little pieces again, just to help stick the top bread to everything else. Yes, a little cheese on the top will help all the ingredients sort of hold together, and it also helps stick the top slice of bread to the rest of the sandwich so your sandwich doesn't fall apart once you take it out of the oven. And you get more cheese. Okay. Yeah, more cheese <laughs> is not a bad thing. Okay. Well, maybe not according to our cardiologist. but Okay, so we've got everything. Let me show everyone a close-up of how you layered all this together. So we've layered all the ingredients on top of the bottom slice of bread, and the bottom slice of bread is buttered, and the butter side is down on the baking sheet. So now on top of all those lovely ingredients, the top slice goes on and the top slice already has butter on the top. So this is ready to go. So let's put this baby in the oven. Pop it in. Okay, let's pop it in. Okay, and now I wanna set the timer and we're gonna set the timer for six minutes. 
There we go. Okay, so that sandwich is underway. While that one's underway, can we cut this down in smaller pieces yeah. so we can eat some more of it? <laughs> oh, let me get my, uh... I more. Let's just transfer this over because I don't really want to cut on this plate. Yeah. I'm just... Okay, so we're just going to cut the first sandwich that we made uh, that Philip used the circle cutter on. We're going to cut that into quarters so we have little more bite size or hors d'oeuvre size pieces. It's I know, a little they look more like than little pizza slices. I know they look like it's little so pizza cute. slices. It's so cute. So let's put it back out on this beauty plate. This looks so cute. And that's the lapis. This is lapis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For those of you that are following our collection of Fiesta Ware dishes, this is a square salad plate. We're using it for these pizza uh, grilled cheese today, and this color is called lapis blue. That's yeah, the only one we have in that color. Right? We, is, this is the only piece of lapis blue it's that we have so far. Discontinued. No, it's not. Oh, it no, lapis is good. It's peacock that's discontinued. Oh, lapis is color. still available. Well, let's pick some But on. we only have, okay, well, we were just talking last night. What are we going to buy next? <laughs> now I guess we know the answer to that. We have a budget. So, Every month we spend a little bit. A money. little bit. We have a budget, and you know we already spent our January budget, so we we can hardly wait for February to get here. So. Okay. Margaret's commenting that oatmeal bread works really well for toasted oh, sandwiches. Ooh, that sounds really good. Yeah, it does sound really good, Margaret. I love oatmeal bread. Okay, so oh, potato bread too. Really potato good. bread mm -hmm. that would be really that yummy, good. super delicious. So okay, our second sandwich is in the oven baking, and just so you know, we're using the June oven again with the roast feature. The oven is set to 375 degrees, and it takes about six minutes for these sandwiches to bake. So the roast feature, what that does, for those of you that aren't familiar with this oven, it makes it engages the heating element in the top of the oven and in the bottom of the oven. Flip it. So you don't ever have to turn the sandwich over. Yeah. Once you pop it in the oven, it does its thing, and as soon as the bell rings, it comes out, and voila, lunch is served. We so, for June. Now, we took the circle and Philip cut it into quarters. So this is a super easy way to turn uh, any sandwiches, but grilled cheese in this case, uh, or pizza grilled cheese, I should say. These are would be great little bite-sized sandwiches for a soiree or oh, yeah. a party or game day, hello, for yeah, game day, game but day. you're gonna need probably a hundred of yeah. them for game day. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be very, very busy. And we've been drinking a lemon drop cocktail this afternoon. These are so yummy. Cheers, everyone. Mmm. Mm. Oh, so, so good. These are so delicious. Okay. Oh, Cooking with Trish is here. Hi, Trish. Great to see you. Thank you for coming to hang out with us today. So what Trish's question is, is she wants to know if you baked these in a regular oven, how long will it take? Oh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the, and the answer to that is we don't know. Um. The, even with this one, I, I it, it, it varies. I, I, I can't, you eat different breads take different length of time. Right. Um, so we even here we we tested it out. And we got the six minute time frame. So you start low, and you know if it's not cooked enough, it'll go longer. But uh, probably the, I'm probably nearly the same amount. I would think it's. Although the June does cook things. The faster June does tend to cook things faster because it's a smaller cavity of space and it heats up more quickly and it's also well insulated. So the heat stays very even throughout the bake time. If we were doing this in a conventional oven, it would be hard to engage the top element without using the broil feature. And then you wouldn't engage the bottom element. Isn't that how a conventional oven works? I think conventional ovens actually have roast Do they have a roast too? Thing? Yeah. Ours doesn't. No, but no. We have an oven that's older than dirt. And so the built-in oven yeah, doesn't have a roast second feature. One because the, first one the key to getting this done in an oven is that you can engage the uh, broil element on the top and the baking element on the bottom of the oven at the same time. So if you don't have an, onion, an oven that can do that, then this isn't going to work out so well, or you'll have to take the sandwich out halfway through the bake time and flip it over. You know. You know, which isn't the end of the world. <laughs> no, okay. that, that would work. So I see Karen's here from In the Kitchen with Karen. Hey, Karen. Great to see you. So nice to have you here today. Karen's channel. I think I mentioned this last week, but I can't promote mm -hmm. her enough. Uh, she went over a thousand subscribers recently. Yeah. So congratulations to you, Karen. She's worked very hard the last few months 
to get her channel noticed and she's doing a great job. Her food is awesome. So if you're not familiar with her channel, I'd encourage you to go check it out when you're done watching us today. So thank you so much for joining us, Karen. It's always a pleasure to have you here. So let me see. Um, okay, I think I said hi to everyone. Okay, Tom's gotta go. Tom, hi, Tom. Moi, great to see you. Thank you for checking in with us today. It's always a pleasure to have your avatar come across our screen. Thank you for joining us today. And let's see, okay. So I wanna try a little, th these are so cute. So I think this is really a lovely little appetizer size sandwich. Hmm. And it's not messy. So it would be okay for date food. Putting the cheese on top and the bottom helps keep everything. Yeah, in the everything shape. stays together really nicely. Mmm. Mmm. These flavors are so good. This really tastes like pizza in a sandwich. How mm -hmm. cool is that? I love doing mashups. Mm -hmm. They're so fun. Oh my gosh, these are super good. I wish we could like beam you guys some of these <laughs> so you could taste them. Okay, so next sandwich is ready to come out. Where's the um? Oh, no, right here, boo. Oh. I got them. Okay, so we're ready to get the second sandwich out of the oven. Ooh, it's all melty, melty. Okay, so there you go. This is how the artisan white bread came out. And one thing that we noticed, when we use the wheat bread, the toastiness on the bottom and the top is usually really even. When we've been doing the white bread, not so much. It's a little more toasty on the bottom than it is on the top. And we'll show you that as soon as uh, this cools slightly so I can flip it over. Everything okay? Yeah. Okay. It's got marinara on it. Oh, it's got marinara on it. We can't get marinara on this other sandwich. So I want to flip this well, over. I'm going to have to get something to yeah. flip it over. Okay. I'll put it on okay. Careful because it's really hot. Yeah. Voila. Okay, there we go. You can see it's a little right. toastier. It is toast on the bottom. It is toastier on the bottom than it is on the yeah. top in this case. That hasn't been a problem when we've used the wheat bread, but we noticed on this artisan white bread that toastiness doesn't come out even on both sides. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but it doesn't make it any less delicious. We just like to flip it over so it gets the toasty side up because that's the side that looks the prettiest. So, well, the other pretty. This is cool. what our sandwich came out like with the non-traditional pizza ingredients. So, for those of you who missed out, inside of this sandwich is bang bang sauce, uh, bacon lardone, gouda cheese, and Pickle pickled peppers. peppers. Hey, Suburban Barbecue is here. Great to see you. Thanks so much for coming to hang out with us. And Cooking with Jen and Drinking with Gina are here. Great to see you, too. Thanks so much for joining us today. So you're just yeah. in time to see the second sandwich that just came out of the oven. And this sandwich is filled with non-traditional pizza ingredients. And I'm going to repeat myself again for those of you that missed it. We've got Bang Bang Sauce, Gouda Cheese, Bacon Lardone, and Pickled bell peppers. So that sounds really awesome. Those are some, you see those ingredients on pizza, just not as often as marinara sauce and uh, pepperoni. I'm going to cut this again, I guess. Okay. Uh, we're going to cut, this is how you would serve, you can serve this any way you want. We're going to cut it into irregular, what are those, parallelograms? <laughs> not quite. It's like your little off angle. Yeah. We went angled instead of squared. So it doesn't really matter. You can cut these in whatever size pieces you want, or you can just eat the whole sandwich without cutting it apart at all. It's whatever <laughs> you think you want to do. So, uh, oh, Flour, Eggs, and Yeast is here. Hi, okay. great to see you. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to have you here. So we've just taken this sandwich. This is our second sandwich that we made today with pizza ingredients inside of grilled cheese sandwiches. And this, these are still pretty hot, but we can probably taste that in the not too distant future. Yeah. So just so you know, all the ingredients for both the sandwiches we made and the Limoncello Lemon Drop Cocktail are right down below in the description section. So you can copy and paste those to your digital recipe book. Mm. Let me. Mm. These are really yummy. They're refreshing and delicious. All at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Oh, did Karen get monetized? Someone said Karen already got monetized. I want to know the secret of how people <laughs> get 4,000 hours in less than six months because we've been on YouTube for five and a half years and we're not anywhere close to 4,000 watch hours yet. So I don't know how that happens. Uh, as soon as, if someone wants to tell us the secret, we'll certainly give it a try. So, uh, but congratulations, Karen. That's awesome news. It's always cool to be able to start making a little bit of money off all the hard work you're doing on your channel. And Mona's here. Hey, Mona, great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Flour, Eggs, and Yeast says that they are very thankful for their job, but sometimes they just want to watch Kitchen Queers. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. We wouldn't have a live stream, a successful live stream, without all the lovely people that come to the yeah. chat and hang out with us. It makes it so much fun. So tell us, how is this second sandwich? Delicious. Okay, let me oh have I, I can't wait anymore. I've got to try this myself. The bang bang sauce is spicy sweet, and then the gouda, nice gouda, mm. cheese. Oh, Bacon, yeah. of course, and then the peppers. Oh, God. This is really yummy. Good. Now, this, for me, this doesn't taste as much like traditional pizza as the one with the pepperoni and marinara, no. but this definitely has pizza elements going on in it. And this Gouda cheese, oh, it melts so nicely and it tastes so good. And the bacon with the bang bang sauce mm. is a really delicious combination. The bang bang, like Philip said, it's sweet but spicy. And then with that crunchy, Salty, yummy bacon. It just all these flavors play really nicely together. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh, these are so so good. These are even better than I thought they were going to be. Mm. 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 These are so good. You guys will love these. Now, if you don't have a June oven like we do, you can make grilled cheese sandwiches, you know, the old fashioned way in a skillet on the stove, heat it up on one side, flip it over part way through and get the other side to a panini press or any kind of you know, closing griddle. Yeah, the waffle iron that we used last week has a panini press, uh, has panini press plates. So we could cook these in our waffle iron as well. And they don't have to look like waffles. They'll look like panini sandwiches unless we put them in the waffle iron. We actually did make sandwiches, <laughs> excuse me, in our dash waffle iron a few weeks ago, and uh, when we did the, the bread with the ingredients inside and we cut oh, the yeah. bread into circles. Mm -hmm. So you can definitely use whatever you've got available, however you like to make your grilled cheese sandwiches. We just encourage you to give, try to put things put things in there other than just regular, you know, pieces of cheese because grilled cheese can go in a whole lot of fun directions and these are super delicious. So let's see. Okay, I think I've said hi to everyone in the chat room. I wanna make sure we're keeping up with all of our friends. So that is so yummy. These are so delicious. So if you missed out on this cocktail, we'll finish this one and maybe we'll have time to make another one. Mm. These are so good. So these limoncello lemon drops, they're very similar to a regular lemon drop, except for instead of simple syrup, I substituted limoncello, which adds more lemon flavor a similar amount of sweetness and definitely more booze. <laughs> so if you like boozy yet yummy cocktails, this limoncello lemon drop will work for you. And the list of ingredients, what go into this drink are right down in the description below. So you can make these at home yourself and you don't have to do the sugar rim if you don't want to. But it makes it fun and gets you more sweet. Mm. Mm. These are so good. Karen is asking if the June oven is a halogen light oven. And the answer to that is no. Uh, halogen lights are not the heating element for this oven. There are actually uh, long, narrow coils that are sealed inside of a glass tube. And they're at the bottom and at the top of the oven. And that's, how, I don't know what else to call them other than heating elements. But there, I mean, there is a light inside of the yeah, oven, but, but the happening. lights yeah. itself are not what's doing the cooking. So Arcade Arcade is here. Meow. Oh, great nice. to see you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And for those of you who came late, we've been making a mashup of pizza ingredients inside of grilled cheese sandwiches, and we're serving them with limoncello lemon drop cocktails. Cheers, honey. Thanks so much for all your hard work today. Oh my gosh, these are yummy. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> oh, thank you so much. Sunset says she's going to marathon watch our channel <laughs> to help bring up our watch hours. I have no idea how people get their watch hours up so fast when it's taken us an eternity. Sometimes we've discussed, we wonder if there's something about the YouTube system that's like suppressing our content for reasons that you know we aren't aware of. I'm not sure why that would be the case, but we've seen lots of people work really hard and get their channel up to a thousand subscribers and get monetized in just a few months, not unlike what Karen did. And yet we've been at it for a long time. And even though we have a lovely following of very loyal fans, we still have a long way to go before we get close to 4,000 hours. So we're doing our best though, since we've been doing live streams every week for the past few months. It is definitely, we've, we've definitely got our hours up significantly, but we also still have quite a ways to go to hit that 4,000 mark. So we appreciate all of you hanging out here and helping yeah. our numbers go up Thank because you so without much. you, we're just doing a show for ourselves and that's not nearly as much fun as having an audience of people checking it all out. So. Okay, let's see. I want to make sure I said, you know, I hope not. We'll see what happens. But yeah, um, well, on our watch hours, we're just we're just like about almost halfway to 4,000. A lot of people are always really reluctant to talk about what their actual numbers are. But I saw an interview with another channel where the guy was being really straightforward about his numbers. And of course, his numbers were off the chart. So it's easy <laughs> when you can brag and say, oh, yeah, I had 25,000 watch hours last year. I mean, one of these days we'll get there. I see so many channels zoom up quickly and other channels are more like us where we're sort of slow and steady. So hopefully that slow and steady will be slowly steady on the way up. We'll see how that goes. We're doing our best to come up with interesting content to help keep you hooked and coming back. And so we certainly appreciate our regular viewers as well as our new viewers. Go ahead, have whatever you want. It's lunchtime here in California. We usually have our lunch at somewhere around one o'clock. So what we've been doing lately is uh, whatever we make during our live stream turns out to be whatever we eat for lunch that day. Mm. So <laughs> Suburban says he has zero watch hours and he worked really hard for those. But that's because Jim has, I think, 1,500 or so subscribers, but he has absolutely no content on his channel. He's hugely popular because he hangs out in live streams like this for a lot of different channels and is very supportive of the channels he participates in. And we certainly appreciate we certainly you do. doing that for <laughs> us. Thank you so much. So let's see. Uh, yes, actually, Margaret's right. Doing the live feeds has definitely helped our numbers go way up. Whenever we do a live stream like this, we usually see, you know, at least 20, sometimes 30, uh, we've done a few live streams where we had 50 watch hours from just one live stream that was actually only an hour long. And so we do find that um, not only is the lively chat a super fun element of doing live streams, but our watch hours started going up significantly faster once we did that. Because not only does it, it it's a longer time period for everyone to hang out and get to know us and see what we're up to, uh, that that inherently leads to more watch time because most of our pre-recorded episodes are three to five minutes long. And even if a thousand people watch them, it's going to take a while to build up enough time to get to 4,000 hours. So we managed to hit a thousand subscribers about a year and a half ago. And that was all thanks to all of you helping us out. Several channels gave us shout outs. People that have a little more uh, exposure than we do helped us along. And we really appreciate that. The community has been great to us. Yeah, that's Thank one so thing much. I have to say. If you are doing a YouTube channel yourself and you're finding that you're struggling to make connections, start participating in community. And what that means is go watch some of the other channels' videos and see what people are up to and make thoughtful comments if you have something positive to contribute to the chat or to the comment section on their page. And that will help that channel as well as people will notice, oh, this person makes lovely comments in these chats and then people will come and check your channel out. That's how we started really building our channel because we struggled for the first couple of years we were on. I think after two years, we only had like 48 subscribers. It was embarrassing. And I thought we were putting out some pretty nice content, but it wasn't really leading uh, but we to, weren't participating. Yeah, but we weren't participating in the community. So once we started doing that, we saw our numbers start to rise and we started to get noticed. And we met some fabulous people. Yeah, and now we have 
2,500 friends from all over the world that come and hang out with us all the time. So it's not going to get much better than that. I'm not really interested in having our channel monetized because I want to run ads because frankly, I find ads on people's videos really irritating. I'm okay <laughs> with watching an ad at the beginning of a video and or at the end of a video, but some people have what are called mid-roll ads on their channel. And that's where all of a sudden in the middle of the video up pops an ad and you've got to watch an ad for three minutes uh, before you can watch the rest of their video. There's a couple of channels that I really enjoy the content and the host of the channel. But, you know, if you've got a five minute video and there's three commercials during that video that are three minutes long each, guess what's going to happen? People are going to click and go watch something else. So <laughs> if you are monetized, I would encourage you to consider to limit the number of mid roll ads that you have during your videos. Because if I, one mid roll ad, I can watch and wait to see what else is coming up and for the rest of your show. But if there's two or three, I'm probably not going to watch the rest of your video. So just keep that in mind when you're figuring out how to schedule the ads that show on your channel. And someday we'll have the luxury of doing that for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what I really want to be monetized for is because in, you don't have to run ads on your channel if you don't want to once you're monetized. But what you can do is do what's called Super Chat. And Super Chat is like when we were guests on the Cooking with CJ show a year or so ago. They uh, He's monetized, so they have Super Chat. And what that means is down at the bottom of the chat next to the smiley face where you see the emojis, there's also a dollar sign. And people can contribute to your channel that way just by clicking the dollar sign and typing in an amount of money. Now on the Cooking with CJ channel, how he does it, when he interviews other people, they, have, they set a price when we were on, it was $25. Anyone that paid $25, then all of us that were on the live stream would take a shot. That's such hard work. It was really hard work. <laughs> and actually, that night, there were so many people contributing to the Super Chat that we did a shot of tequila every time there was a $25 donation. And we were hammered <laughs> by the end we were on that live stream for two and a half hours I was under the bar and yeah it was we were we were very 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 hung over the next day <laughs> i'll tell you that right now but the super chat is that's the real reason i want to be monetized is so we can do that and you can also use that as an opportunity to raise money for charity yeah. you know sometimes we participated in the hashtag cooking against cancer collaboration about a year ago and there were some people that did live streams and those people that were monetized and had super chat you could use that to raise money for charity purposes as well so that also helps out there as well so uh yes shots i know shot we're gonna have to do some shots we haven't had a video where we did any shots but we're actually uh have done lots of drinking <laughs> when we have party videos in addition to just our daytime show on Tuesdays, and we're going to be doing a Valentine party show on Saturday, February 13th, the night before Valentine's Day. And so that night we'll be eating some yummy hors d'oeuvres and mixing a few pink and red cocktails. If you want to know how to make some lovely pink and red cocktails, our video that came out last Friday has seven different pink and or red drinks that are perfect for Valentine's Day. And they most of them only have three or four ingredients, so they're not hard to put together. And we like to make cocktails with ingredients that are widely available. So you have just as much chance of being successful with the cocktails as we are because the things that we are suggesting you use as ingredients are things that you can get at the grocery store or the liquor store. You don't have to travel anywhere special to get most of the ingredients for the, either the things that we cook or the drinks that we like to drink. So, chef. Okay, Kit Karen's talking about signing up for the Amazon affiliate account. We actually already have that. And uh, for the last couple of weeks, we didn't do it today because we like to feature, uh, put links in the description below our videos, our live streams for the products that we're using in that specific video. Uh, today, we don't have anything. Well, you can actually buy a June on Amazon yeah. when they're in stock. Right now, they're all sold out. So you'll probably see links to for June ovens on our uh, descriptions on our live streams and pre-recorded videos in the not too distant future. So oh, it's, let's see, I want to make sure I'm paying attention to this. Yes. We've also had, in addition to using Amazon affiliates, 
for products. We've had lots of different vendors contact us directly and offer us products to try out and check out. And we've featured some of those products on our show. We did the Smart Tro, and we've done lots of Whoa. videos about Uncle we Steve's love shake. Uncle Steve. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Steve sends us lovely products and we use them all the time. So I only say yes to offers of products when I think it's something that we actually would use. You know, there's our house is small and we already have a lot of kitchen gear. So if I only say yes to things that I know specifically that we actually would want to try and hopefully feature. We've done lots of unboxing videos and we'll continue to do that. And we'll see what happens with the Amazon affiliate account. Um, well, that's good. Oh, Flower Eggs and Yeast is saying their affiliate account, they finally got some sales last week after months of nothing. Well, congratulations. Yes. Yay, that's always awesome. That I know we were super happy. We have, um, in addition to being having Amazon affiliate links for some products that you see in our videos, we also have an online store where you can get our rainbow logo gear. So whether it's a hat or an apron or a mug or a beer stein or shot glasses, if you'd like to help us out, we do get commissions from our online store. Uh, we're using Customized Girl that prints all of our lovely rainbow logo gear and our swag. So you can just go to kitchencouriers.com and if you click on the lifestyle button, which is in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, that'll take you to our Customized Girl store where you can see our cool hats, our cool aprons, and all the goodies that we have with our cute little colorful rainbow logo on them. So you can get those right from Customized Girl. They ship really fast. All the printing that we've gotten, we've ordered literally dozens and dozens of products for them for ourselves, and so have several of our fans. So if you want to go there and check that out, you can get a T-shirt. They're lovely, high-quality Hanes T-shirts. They're nice. The printing is really lovely and colorful, as you can see here. And it's not expensive, and they ship quickly. So if you want to check that out, just go to kitchenqueries.com, click on the Lifestyle button, and you can get right a look at all of our cool, lovely rainbow. So, and Sunset is commenting that they have a to use okay. every single day. We're so happy to hear that. Thank you so much, Sunset, for being with us. We really appreciate it. And if you're running a YouTube channel and you want to create some merchandise for yourself, I would recommend Customize Girl. We actually suggested it to our friend Jill from the Yester Kitchen channel. And she has all her gear coming from Customized Girl. They do a beautiful job on the printing. They have lots of different products. You can apply your logo or whatever design you like. And you can create your store there at no charge and put your designs on any products that you want. And you don't have to buy anything first. You can just create your store and let other people buy from you. We've ordered, we have like six aprons, 25 hats. I mean, you know, we have everything. Tons of t-shirts, tank tops. I think we even have boxer shorts with our logo on them. They have a lot of cool products at Customized Girls. So if you're looking to create some custom merchandise for your YouTube channel, we would recommend going to customize.com. And it's really easy to set up your own store there and then upload your graphics or your images and apply them to all the different products that they have. And you can create your own store there and it doesn't cost anything. And then when people order from that store, they do all the work, they do all the printing, they do all the packaging and wrapping and they ship things out to the customer is wait for the commissions to come in. And that's where, uh, that's actually been our only source of revenue so far is from people buying t-shirts and hats and shop classes from our customized girl store. So we thank you all for doing that. It really helps us out a lot. Do we have a PO box? The answer to that is no, but we do have a snail mail address that we occasionally share with people that we know we can trust. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us first. <clears throat> Our email address is staff, S-T-A-F-F, -F, at kitchenqueers.com. And that'll get forwarded to our private email where we'll answer you personally. So if you need to reach us, staff at kitchenqueers.com, that's where uh, we'll be able to get your email. And then we can converse about if we want to send things back and forth. So thank you so much for asking about the, that, Jim. We really appreciate that. Uh, Sunset's asking about Patreon or PayPal. We do not have a Patreon account. For those of you who don't know what Patreon is, it's a service that allows people to make donations to your channel. And in exchange, you give something back. Um, we know someone who does Patreon and what she does on her channel is when someone donates money to her channel, she'll make a custom message 
especially for you and then put it up and send it to you so you can download it and replay it. And sometimes some other channels also offer specialized private live streams where if you've paid an, a little extra fee, you can participate in a live stream that you have to have an invitation to watch. It's not a public live stream that anyone can see. So that's one way to go. So far, we're not using PayPal to try to raise money for our channel because I really, uh, I don't want people giving us money for nothing. <laughs> I, if you want to help us out, buy an apron, buy a hat, buy a t-shirt, that will help subscribe us out. Subscribe or get a friend to subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to our channel. <laughs> Take Sunset's suggestion and watch a marathon yeah. of our show for a couple <laughs> of hours, hours yeah. and help us build up our watch time. That would really help yeah. a lot. So let me see. I want to see where, make sure I didn't miss out on anybody. Hey, Beer Bros and Bon Appetit. He's still hanging out in the show. Great to see you today. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And let's see. I think I've said hi to everyone. So today we've been making... Grilled cheese sandwiches with some traditional and some non-traditional pizza ingredients. And we also made these lovely limoncello lemon drop cocktails. Oh, yours is all gone. Do you want me to make you another one? Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> Last week we had two and we were a little woozy while we were washing the dishes afterwards. Nice. We can wait till later. Mm. Okay. Well, yeah, we usually have cocktails in the afternoon between four and seven. That's our cocktail oh, hour. Oh, we're having dinner and watching TV. Yeah, exactly. So let me see. I think we said hi to everyone in the channel and we're doing good. So how do you feel? Uh, good. We're good. Okay. Yeah. So if you missed out on any of the ingredients that we included in the two pizza grilled cheese sandwiches we made today, they're in the description right below where you're watching this live stream, as well as the ingredients or the limoncello lemon drop cocktail. And this is super yummy. And these pizza grilled cheese sandwiches were oh. also supremely yummy. So easy to do. Sunset says she wants us, uh, he, excuse me. Sunset says they want us to get paid for our work. Well, we agree. We would love <laughs> to get paid for work too. And well, it'll happen. And frankly, you people participating in our live shows and stuff, making us feel better. That's, that's, Big payment right there. Yes, that is definitely okay. true. That is definitely true. Having the ability to do these live streams not only has increased our watch time, but we, this instant feedback and the lovely comments and questions that we get in the chat room while the live stream is unfolding is supremely fun. I mean, this is really our got lots uh, of good feedback. social hour, if and you will. things to try. Yeah, like, yeah, people have made suggestions and we've been able to, you know, modify things we were doing right on the fly and give it a shot and see how it's things fun. work out. So that's always super fun. And if you are doing a YouTube channel and you've yet to do a live stream, I'd encourage you to consider it because being able to engage directly with your viewers and your fans is really super fun. And that's something that no amount of money can buy. So that's really super cool to have all this lovely chat going. And we know that, uh, you know, we, we get to see all this lovely feedback right in real time. And so that really helps us, you know, stay motivated to keep going, yeah. even when we're not raking in the bucks from our channel. <laughs> the, Michelle wants to know how to limit the commercials in your video. Okay, since we're not monetized, I can't actually tell you the details of exactly how to do that. Though I do know from other people that are monetized that you can change where and when and how often ads show up in your videos. Like say, for example, you'll see some channels, instead of an actual video ad interrupting the video itself, sometimes a banner ad will run across the bottom. Those are all things that you have the ability to control. We have some other acquaintances that run a channel and they're monetized and they don't run any ads on their channel at all. They only use the monetization for super chats uh -huh. while they do live streams. And they also have a new feature that's being tested on some channels. Not everyone that's monetized has access to this, but there's a newer feature called applause. And you'll notice that on some monetized channels down where the uh, icon is for emojis, there will also be, or where the thumbs up and thumbs down uh, buttons are, there'll be a special button called applause. And anytime anyone clicks the applause button, that channel gets $2. So 
two dollars doesn't sound like a lot, but if you have fans yeah. that are clicking it a hundred times during your video, that's two hundred dollars. So you were able to generate some income without having to run any ads that unfortunately sometimes when people get monetized, they notice that their views go down because people don't want to wait for an ad to be over. Mm -hmm. You can also control whether or not the ads on your channel can be skipped. You'll see on some channels that'll play an ad for a little while and then the button in the lower right portion of the screen will say skip and you can push that and skip through the rest of the ad. There are skippable ads and non-skippable ads. Fortunately, the skippable ads seem to be all the ones that are like infomercials. There are some ads on YouTube that run for 45 minutes because it's basically a whole infomercial show. I don't know about you, but I don't want our viewers <laughs> having to wait 45 minutes for anything, for what? let alone an advertisement <laughs> to go by. So Michelle, I'll look into a little bit more about how to change the ads on your channel. I have to actually do it secondhand through someone else since we're not monetized yet and we can't access how to control the advertisement since we don't have that feature available to us. But I do know for certain that you can control when, where, and how often the ads show up on your channel. You're not at the mercy of the platform for having ads wherever they decide they want to put them. You can modify that. And whether or not that winds up making any more money or not, or creating any more views or upping your watch time remains to be seen. Everyone's channels are different. We know some, we know a channel where they have actually over a million subscribers and every time they upload a video within the first hour, there's 10,000 views. So clearly there's a lot of people that are willing to wait for a four minute ad to go by in order to watch some of these lovely shows that people are putting out. So having more ads is not necessarily a bad thing, that's a personal thing everyone needs to decide for themselves what fits best for their channel and what works really well for their subscribers. So Sunset's commenting that she watched a 45 minute ad for an animal rescue channel. Oh, wow. Well, that's not a bad thing. That's if I was going to watch a 45 minute ad, it would have to be about something important like animal rescue. That's for sure. Well, thank you, Michelle. We uh, Michelle's channel, I always gushing over Michelle because she makes such beautiful things on her channel. She's just an amazing artist. And even if you're not a DIY person or you don't do arts and crafts yourself at home, her projects are lovely and they're very inspirational. I get so many cool ideas and I've learned so many new techniques and also seen pieces of equipment. I think I'm a pretty proficient, we're both pretty proficient in the arts and crafts department and Philip is a brilliant sewer. And so to see uh, someone else doing those kinds of projects and using cool new tools that we've never seen, <laughs> that's always fun. I love learning about new tools. So, okay. So I think we're just about at the end of our time frame today yeah. for what we have to show you. We hope you enjoyed hanging out with us this afternoon as much as we've enjoyed being here with you. You had a great lunch. We really appreciate everyone participating in the lively chat. That makes our show so much more fun. Yeah. Not only for us to see the chat going on, but we know for the viewers that like to participate in the chat room. So we really appreciate everyone being on their best behavior. We rarely have to monitor a thing because we have such lovely fans that come and hang out with us. So just to let you know what's coming up. On Friday, we'll have another pre-recorded episode, and this Friday, we're going to show you our brand new portable lean-to greenhouse that we installed on our balcony last week, and we're going to be growing all kinds of herbs inside of that uh, beautiful little unit, and we'll show you what we bought, how we put it together, how it was installed, and then we'll you can see what happened when it was all finished. Right now, we're just doing our best to keep our fingers crossed because it's so windy today we were worried that our brand new greenhouse is going to blow away but so far it's still it's where it belongs yeah. so on friday this friday look for a pre-recorded episode that'll be featuring our brand new greenhouse and then next tuesday at noon pacific time 3 p.m eastern we'll be live right back here again most likely right here from our dining room sometimes we come to you from the kitchen sometimes we come to you from over there in the bar so it'll be one of those locations. So we'll have another live stream. We're doing live streams every Tuesday now at noon time, Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern. We've been doing the Tuesday live streams for about four months now, and it's been working out really well. And we've had lots and lots of really fun times hanging out with all of our friends online. And it's super cool. So look for us next Tuesday at noon Pacific time. We'll have another fun live stream for you. And in the meantime, 
check out our new greenhouse video. It'll be available to watch on Friday. And we'll look forward to seeing all the new videos from your channels. Those of you that are running a YouTube channel yourself, we can't wait to see what you've got coming up. And don't forget, a week from this Friday, on January 29th, is the hashtag Great Meatball oh, Cookoff right. 2021. Meatball. So that collaboration is involving, uh, I think there's more than two dozen channels oh. participating now. So there's going to be a lot of lovely food. We're all making meatballs with different recipes. So if you like meatballs, there are going to be balls galore on Friday, January 29th. And you can make whatever jokes about balls that you want. We're totally okay with that. <laughs> so it should be really fun. We're looking forward to seeing what everyone's been making. I happen to know what one person's making, and it's a very exotic take on a meatball with the protein that you don't often see on a dinner table, but it is going to be super cool to check that out. So wall-to-wall uh, -wall balls. That's right, Jim. There'll be balls all over the place on Friday, January 29th. So ladies, gentlemen, non-binary guests, we really appreciate you hanging out with us this afternoon. I'm Mitch. I'm Philip, And we're the Kitchen Queers. And just remember, queer is not a bad word. It means unusual, extraordinary, and unique. Those are all things we want to be. So it's perfectly okay to say that word in a positive context. It's no longer a slur as far as we're concerned. So really appreciate you all joining us. We uh, really, really, really enjoy having all this lovely chat. And I see Rob from Mr. Homeowner Cooking and DIY is commenting about a new Joshathon. We would love to participate in that. That would be so cool. We were very fortunate that Josh and Babe invited us to host their channel two different times during the takeover, uh, the Cooking Cop and Babe channel takeover. So we were super excited to have that opportunity to help them out because they're just lovely young people. And we just really, really hope everything goes well for them. So yes, absolutely, Rob. Be sure and let us know whatever details you've got going on because we would love to help out and participate in any way that we can. So thank you all so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much for being here. We'll be back live again next Tuesday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll be making something yummy and drinking cocktails right in the middle of the afternoon like we always do on Tuesdays. And don't forget our pre-recorded episode coming up on Friday all about our greenhouse. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's been great to have you all here. And we'll be back again soon. So take care. Thanks for joining us today. Ciao, Bella. <laughs>